Hey everyone. So after working with Final Cut Pro X for a few weeks now, I've noticed that after I apply some LUTs and effects and transitions, it does start to bog down and slow down a bit. Not to mention the render and export times can sometimes take a while too. So I've done some research into eGPUs and I think I'm going to go out and grab one. It does help that I already have a Radeon RX 580 graphics card from a previous build that's just kind of lying around. So I'll be able to pop that into the eGPU once I grab one. All right, let's do this. Here it is, the Razer Core X. Unfortunately, I couldn't pick up the Chroma. I did actually want the Chroma edition because of the additional USB ports and Ethernet port, but because they're sold out everywhere, I ended up grabbing one of these instead. This is what it comes in. Let's crack this open. Molly's interested. Everyone meet my cat, Molly, before I continue. Out you go. Ah, and here we go, this is where we see our first sign that is from Razer. Let's keep going. And here, accessories like cables and etc. Let's open it up and find out. Stickers, some assembly instructions. Yeah. Thunderbolt 3 cable, looks really short. It says on the website it's 0.5 meters long and nice power cable. All right, we can see it. Huh, this is actually plastic. I thought this would be metal, but it's plastic. Here you go, you can see here, there are no ports to be found on this one. Let's now open it up. Quick release, and it should just slide out, which it does very nicely here. Here it is. Don't know if you can see that. The inside PCIe power supply unit. The old RX 580. This should boot nicely the moment I plug it in. Plug and play, as they say. Plug and play. Done. Nope, seems to have inserted it. It's too high. Let's try that again. Oh, there we go. Found the rails this time. Slides in closes. All right, so after setting up for a few days now and integrating it into my workflow, here are my conclusions. The Razer Core X eGPU and the RX 580 graphics card connect to my MacBook running on macOS Catalina without any issue. It's as simple as plugging it in, waiting for a few seconds for it to be detected, then a new icon pops up in the menu bar where it lists the graphics card enclosed inside the eGPU. It's also listed in the system overview, so that's another way to check if your eGPU is being detected. Performance wise, it's more of a mixed bag. It's not quite consistent across the system, and there's definitely some, how should I say, some quirks with how the eGPU is utilized. Before I share the details of my results though, I'll quickly explain the three setups I used in my testing. The first setup was the Intel Iris running on the built-in display. The second was an eGPU with one monitor directly connected into it. And the second setup was the eGPU again, but this time with two monitors connected directly into it. In case you're wondering why I've included a dual monitor setup, I'll explain that in a bit. It's also worth noting that for best results, it's always recommended that you connect an external monitor directly to the eGPU. This ensures the Thunderbolt 3 connection doesn't become congested with traffic looping back into your MacBook. Now with that out of the way, let's get into some benchmarks. Using Geekbench, I ran Metal and OpenCL tests on all three setups that I just mentioned. So, on the Intel Iris chip, the Metal score averaged around 10,400. 
when I enabled the eGPU and connected a single monitor to it, we already saw a drastic improvement with scores averaging around 36,500. That's a pretty remarkable 350% increase in performance. The boost in performance was even better when running the OpenCL benchmark. The average hovered around 9,200 when using the Intel Iris chip, and the moment I enabled that eGPU, I was seeing average scores of 37,000, which is an incredible 400% increase. Now let's pause for a minute before I move on to the final setup where I had two monitors connected to the eGPU. Whilst researching about eGPUs, I read some user reports saying they noticed that running two monitors seemingly increased the performance they could squeeze out of an eGPU. Other users also tested this theory using a headless HDMI adapter also known as a dummy adapter, which basically emulates a secondary display and fools the computer into thinking there's another monitor connected. I wanted to test this theory, but as I don't have a second monitor, I chose the more affordable route of grabbing an HDMI adapter for $10 while I was out shopping for the Razer Core X. With the dummy adapter plugged in and thus emulating a second display, I ran the same Metal and OpenCL benchmarks. The Metal score now averaged around 43,500, which is an additional 20% higher, and the OpenCL score was averaging 42,000, which is about 14% better. But these are just synthetic benchmarks. Would I see similar results in real world scenarios, such as when using Final Cut Pro, which is the main reason why I grabbed an eGPU in the first place? And so I ran a series of tests in Final Cut Pro. I started with the Bruce X benchmark, which is a small project crammed full of transitions and effects. The results show that the Intel Iris was the slowest of the three setups, with an average export time of 40.31 seconds. The eGPU with a single monitor connected averaged 12.36 seconds, and the dual monitor eGPU setup had an average export time of 9.95 seconds. I then loaded up a 5 minute video clip that has various transitions, LUTs and effects throughout, and this is where my results start going a bit bonkers. Running on the Intel Iris, the video would render and export in 2 minutes and 12 seconds, whilst on the eGPU with a single display, it was only marginally faster at 1 minute and 55 seconds. Of course, this is quite a disappointing result considering the main reason I got an eGPU was to speed up this process. However, with a dual monitor setup, the render and export time was slashed to 1 minute and 9 seconds. That's almost half the time compared to the Intel Iris. And to double check I wasn't going crazy, I also tried rendering and exporting a 10 minute clip with almost identical results. The Intel Iris finished in 4 minutes and 17 seconds, single monitor eGPU did it in 4 minutes and 3 seconds, and the dual monitor configuration smoked them both in 2 minutes and 18 seconds. I literally have no explanation for why this is happening, nor do I know if this is intentional or some weird bug. But if my results are reliable, and they very well might not be, then it would appear that in some situations the eGPU just isn't fully utilised until two monitors are connected to it. I think it's safe to say that this isn't ideal and most people would prefer the full performance of their eGPU to not be locked behind a dual monitor setup. But as it stands, that seems to be the case right now. So for all of you running an eGPU on macOS, it might be worth hooking up a second display or grabbing an HDMI dummy just like I did. I'd certainly be interested to hear your results. To wrap up, despite the weird workaround of using an additional headless HDMI adapter, adding an eGPU to my setup has sped up my final cut workflow, whilst also providing some considerable gains in my gaming sessions, which I didn't cover in this video as it's already quite long. The RX 580 is also a dated graphics card at this point, so you'll probably find even more performance gains if you have a newer card such as a Vega 64 or even an RX 5700 XT. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed watching and if you have anything to share about your eGPU experience on macOS, do leave a comment down below. If you liked my video, leave me a thumbs up and if you'd like to watch more content about lifestyle tech and gadgets, then feel free to subscribe too. Once again, thanks and catch you in the next one. Thank you.